Now let's move on to the concept of applications of Gauss law. So under this, let's find check out about the field due to an infinite long stride charged wire. For this, let us consider the uniformly charged wire which is having an infinite length, having a constant linear charge density that is lambda, having charge per unit length. Considering a point P at a distance R from the wire, so this is a wire, and E be the electric field at a point P. So a cylinder of length L and radius R is over here, so this is radius and this one is length. So a cylinder of length L and radius R closed at each other end up by the plane caps normal to the axis is said to be chosen as Gaussian surface. Considering a very small area ds on the Gaussian surface which is indicated over here. So by symmetry the magnitude of the electric field will be the same at all the points on the curved surface of the cylinder and directed radically outward. So you can see here it is going to be radically outward. And E vector and Ds vector are along the same direction. So you can see here. Now the electric flux that is represented as pi through the curved surface will be line integral E into ds cos theta. We knew that the surface area of the curved part that is ds is equal to 2 pi r l. So over here before we apply the value for ds let us first solve out this theta that is cos theta where theta is equal to 0 substituting 1 over here it will become 1. So multiplying this term by 1 it becomes line integral e into ds. Since we knew the value for ds so we can substitute so it becomes pi equal to e into 2 pi r l. Since e and ds are right angles to each other the electric flux through the plane caps will be equal to 0. So this is the reason why the electric flux for the value we have substituted 0. Therefore the total flux through the Gaussian surface is pi equal to E into 2 pi R L. So the net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is Q equal to lambda into L. Therefore by Gauss law we can substitute and yield the value. So Substituting the value for pi, it's E into 2 pi R L. And we knew the value of Q that is lambda into L divided by this epsilon naught. On cancelling L, we'll be getting E equal to lambda divided by 2 pi epsilon naught into R. So direction of the electric field E is radially outward if line charge is positive and it's inward if the line charge is negative.